talk about all the pieces of equipment in my reef tank, from the lights, to the skimmer, to the wave makers, um, everything that I use on a daily basis to keep my reef alive. I thought that might be interesting. I get a lot of questions from uh, a whole bunch of folks off of um, Instagram or YouTube messages um, asking uh, about my setup. So uh, let's jump into it. Listen up, I gotta tell you There is something you should know I have never really liked you at all I cannot hide it anymore I've been thinking about the future so I thought we'd start with the outside of the tank. First, first and foremost, this veggie clip. Uh, it's made by two little fishies. I think I got mine off of Amazon actually. Um, but I use this every single day. And there's a multitude of uses for the veggie clip. Obviously for uh, putting nori in there. The tang and the ras love, uh, love the nori. Um, but I also use it to put um, reef mastic on there as well which is a, a food that you can mix up with um, reef tank water and it turns into this kind of putty that doesn't come away and I put that onto the back of it sometimes and uh, Malcolm the Rass will, uh, will peck at that works out pretty well for that but um, that's the first thing that I use in uh, in my tank on a daily basis is the two little fishies a veggie clip then everyone's favorite the uh, flipper um, deep sea viewer. Um, I only have one of these. I don't have one for my tank upstairs, but I use this every day. You know, when you want to get a close up view of uh, corals, uh, you want to see in those hard to see places, this is the perfect thing. I would recommend everybody um, get a flipper deep sea viewer. It is really, really excellent. Um, I've got no complaints about it. It stays in my tank because I do use it every day. And then if we move around to the side here, I have a standard flipper um, magnet cleaner. Again, I use this every day. I clean the tank, um, I clean the glass of the tank every day. I guess um, just after I've done my feeding, my feeding's normally at four o'clock. So uh, those three things for a start are uh, are pretty invaluable. They, uh, they're pretty much always in the tank. I, I use them all the time, fantastic bits of kit. All right, next. The, um, the LEDs that I use, these are um, Aqua Illumination um, Hydra HD26s. There's a pair of them. Now the benefit with the, with the 26s is you could uh, use the, uh, the web tool to control them. You can't do that with any of these new lights now. Everything has to be done off the phone. Um, but I, I find these have worked great for me thus far. Um, I had really no reason to change them out apart from the fact that I wanted uh, better light, I wanted better spread, um, and I wanted uh, I wanted uh, better par on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of the sand bed. So that's why I have 64 HDs waiting in the wings to go on that I've just been too lazy to do. Um, but these work well. They're on uh, on the single arm HM whatever it's called HMS uh, single arm kits and. Uh, and they work, they work very well. Occasionally I have to reset them, not that often, but uh, those are the lights I use. And you'll see that the baffles, well, they're made by Guy on Reef to Reef, and I'll link his description, uh, I'll link to where you can find him on Reef to Reef in the description notes. Uh, but um, I've had those baffles since about two weeks after I got the lights and uh, they are excellent. All right, next thing. Um, my wave makers. I have two MP40s. I have them on the back wall, and as you can see, that's how I have them connected. The reason I have them on the back wall is I didn't want any cables uh, trailing around on the front. So that is the reason. Um, they work really well. I only have them running at about four and seven percent, um, but I, I don't have a bad thing to say about them. Again, I have a reef link upstairs that connects all these things together. I won't say the reef link is the greatest thing because you know it works sometimes. It you have to reboot it more often than not. But um, the MP40s are working really good. And uh, if anybody's interested in the schedule that I use for those MP40s, just uh, send me a note and I'll, I will let you know. But you can see 
just looking at the tank and the flow that I have in there having those only set at I think the one on the left is running at 7% of its maximum capacity and the one on the right is running at 4% I've got more than enough flow in there um, I have the return pump set pretty high as well so you can see I've got nice movement on the top all right into the sump not much stuff in here I have a NIOS Quantum 160 skimmer um, it is pretty finicky to uh, to get going and get working but as you can see once you do get it going the skim that you get off it is pretty nice it's dark it's lovely um, I have my eight let me turn the lights back on in here again I've got a little auto sensing thing that doesn't want to auto sense all right let's use this I have my apex um, um, probes uh, in the middle section of the sump I have my apex dosing going into the second sock chamber and I also have the temperature and uh, the salinity probe in that far first chamber there where the return pumps come back in and then down the side here I have um, the waste container for the uh, for the trident that tests my magnesium calcium and alkalinity if I go into this far chamber over here you'll see I have my return pump and that's uh, um, an Ecotec um, M2 and I have that set to 60% and then in this first section I have um, a Tons 31 55 ATO and uh, you all know how much I hate that it's just too noisy it's awful you'll also see I have um, hiding away down there is a uh, pod hotel it actually does work I keep that in the middle section of my sump and um, it works really well actually I have, uh, every now and again I give it a shake and I get fresh pods for free back into my uh, display tank so uh, that covers um, what's inside the display tank what's on the outside what's in the sump let's talk about the ancillary items I have this is where the mess begins um, the tank is not big enough to house the cabinet is not big enough to house all of my apex equipment um, or, or very much else for that matter so I'm looking forward to getting a, a larger tank but um, I have my apex I'm a Neptune apex gear installed on a controller board that I got from Marine Depot and uh, that's where I have everything plugged in I split actually the the hardware that I have connected up to my tank between the energy bar and just a normal um, energy bar that I got from uh, I think Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere like that and I do that because I don't like having all of my eggs in one basket and it proved um, the way to go when we had the, the tornado come through and there was a power outage um, it was really easy for me to uh, get my tank up and running again um, at that time from the back of my truck using the power but uh, yeah pretty good there was no need for me to run the apex right using up the extra power in in a time of crisis so all i ran was my um my return pump and the two wave makers everything else was off i have the uh the neptune par meter here as well pmk i think it's called um which i i use every now and again to to check um check par levels in my tank and then just a bundle of cables on the floor which are the, the wave makers, the return pump. I have um, the Finex um, temperature controller. Uh, obviously, the um, the the heating element, the titanium heating element, is inside the tank, and I have that set to seventy seven degrees. And then somewhere tucked back behind there is the uh, is the ATO controller unit. And then right next to the tank, on a little table, is my Trident. Um, is the um, the uh, the dose system, the Neptune dose system, and then on the floor I have the um, Neptune DDR um, system, which uh, which I, I store alkalinity and calcium. So alkalinity on the left and calcium on the right. It's a bit dirty down there at the moment. Uh, I do apologise. So that 
is a very quick and dirty look at the equipment I have both on the outside of my tank in the sump and then the ancillary pieces um, that I have outside the tank that I can't fit in the cabinet. Um, what we'll do now is we'll go into my garage and I'll show you the kind of bone yard where I keep all my spare equipment. Okay, we have now moved to the famous bone yard in the Waterbox Reef uh, garage. Um, I have a bunch of stuff in here that, uh, that I've either had in the tank once or not even tried to put in there. But anyway, let's turn the camera around and show you what I got. So on the floor here, you'll just see this is my where I make my water. The 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 brute uh, trash can on the right that is full of fresh RO, and the one on the left, well, that's mixing up salt water for tomorrow's uh, change. You can see I use um, the uh, Tropic Marine Pro Reef salt. It's all I've ever used. It's all I used when I uh, did this the first time around back in the UK. So on the on the boneyard, you'll find some. Apex uh, wave makers. I have a pair of those. I haven't put them in the the the, the one up the 100.3, the water box 100.3. They're just too powerful for it. They'll go in my uh, new tank, new bigger tank when I get that. That should hopefully be um, hopefully quarter three. We'll see how that goes. Um, I have a clear um, uh, filter here, so the ones that use the uh, the filter fleece. I've never put that in. I'm still using um, filter socks and I change those filter socks every single day. I have um, a Core 20 pump from Neptune that I've never put in. That will go in eventually actually. Um, again, probably in the new tank unless I have a failure. And then I have this, um, I think this is a, uh, what is this? Oh, it's a Jabo. So I bought this as a spare. It's pretty inexpensive. But just in case one of my um, wave makers go out, it's good to have spares. I have two boxes of uh, Trident reagents um, ready to go. Uh, they, at the moment, are like um, unicorns. You can't you can't find these anywhere. I think I got the last two off of uh, off of BRS. I couldn't find them anywhere else. I have my Hanna Salinity Checker. Everybody should have one of these. Um, I have this Tropic Marine Bio Magnesium. So um, I use that uh, for water changes. Um, I just add that to my, uh, my, my fresh salt water just to top the magnesium up. I also add alkalinity to the, um, to the salt water as well mix just to make sure that uh, everything is reading exactly the same as the tank. Then I have uh, this NIOS um, um, reactor, the torque. I've, I have never put this in my tank. My tank does have room for it, but I've never put it in. Um, I have all the stuff to go in it, but I've never put it in. I don't know why, um, I just never had the need. I thought I might do, but never did. So I bought it on a kind of a whim. Um, I will use it one day, maybe in the bigger tank. I have the Neptune leak detection system that I never installed and also the Neptune WX M module that enables my um, <clears throat> lights, current lights, the 26s to be hooked up to the Neptune. Of course, they're not gonna work with the new 64s. I have a bunch of spare filter socks. I have a TDS meter so I can check my TDS. I, I have one on my um, RODI machine as well, but um, I have that as, uh, as a spare. I have um, a bunch of um, backup equipment for the RODI. In fact, I just have to change the resin in it. I'll have to do that tomorrow. What I do is I do the water change and then I start running fresh water for next week straight away. So that's already done uh, and in place when I, when I come to next week, that water will be there available for me. But I do need to change the, the resin and at the same time when I change the resin, I always change the pre-filter and the carbon block. I also have two um, of the membranes ready to go, but hey look, if you take care of your membranes, those things should last a good while, at least a year and a half, if not longer. Um, I have all my carbon over here, uh, Polyplab being my favorite, the um, NIOS carbon being next in line, and then I use the Red Sea Reef carbon in, 
in my cube upstairs. I think that works a lot better for the cube. It's not so aggressive. Um, that, that's really cool for the, the cube and I'd recommend using that. I have all my test kits behind that. I have a bunch of um, Prime and Reef Dip and Reef Shop from Reef, uh, Reef Primer from uh, Polyp Labs. I have um, uh, a normal um, telescope refractometer, refractometer down there and a bunch of HANA uh, test kits there, the phosphate test kit and, and, and a couple of others. And then uh, my, um, my additives for the tank. So I, I order that on quite a regular basis. I go through quite a lot of uh, the Red Sea Foundation B, which is the alkalinity. And then I just have a bunch of other stuff down here, random stuff. I have like coral plugs, some food. I have these handy chlorine test strips. Every week I test the chlorine content of the water coming out of my RO uh, machine just to make sure it's matching what I think it should be matching. So that's the kind of boneyard. There's quite a lot of equipment there. Um, if we swoop down here, this, this is also full of equipment, but I have um, various bits and bobs here. This is what I use to hold the um, uh, pipe in place when I do my water change. There's some old test kits in there. There's a... Um, uh, uh, flipper um, uh, cleaner here as well that I use when I uh, want to get rid of um, the algae right down the bottom underneath the below the line of the sand and then these uh, these things for feeding corals I don't use these anymore actually now I just use the turkey bases I find, I find that work, works a lot better but they're always there on, as a standby and then in the garage you'll see my uh, RO machine, it's a one, two, three, four, is it four stage, five stage, whatever, a something stage, four stage value plus from BRS. And then I have um, my generator that I just bought and this is this will save us when we have power outages. I can highly recommend this generator. Whilst I haven't used it in anger, the thing is silent. It's so, so nice. And then not that you'll want to see this, but uh, this is where I keep, keep my fresh filters. In that one, that's where I keep my old filters. This is all my water change equipment that I keep in here. Um, everybody's sticker. Hope you see yourself up there somewhere. Um, everyone's sticker should be up there. And then all, all the boxes to all the equipment that I have. I keep everything, right? Because. Um, I'm in and out of hobbies like anyone's business, so at some point this will all get sold. It's nice to keep all the boxes. So, that is um, a tour of, uh, of uh, the boneyard and also um, all the equipment that I use in my reef tank. Um, I hope that that's given you some kind of insight into how I do it. Uh, and the pieces of equipment I use. If you have any questions, please post them uh, in the comments below. And, and I do answer every single question. And um, if you have any ideas uh, for further videos, please let me know, because I love doing these. Um, so if you've got any topics you wanna, you wanna um, talk about or want me to talk about, please let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.